Welcome to our YouTube channel where wisdom meets inspiration. In this channel, we share valuable insights to help you become the best version of yourself. Our content is designed to uplift your spirit and enrich your life. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to stay connected with this incredible journey. Click the subscribe button below. Om Sthapakaya Ch Dharmasya सर्वधर्मस्वूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठा रामकृष्णा ते नम ई बो डाउन टू श्रीरामकृष्ण हु इज द एम्बॉडिमेंट ऑफ द इटर्नल रिलीजन ऑल रिलीजन्स द कोर ऑफ ऑल रिलीजन्स हु केम टू शो अस the true religion was the best representative of all these religions and the best incarnation most suitable for the present age this verse was composed by swami vivekananda and this introduces us to the topic how to understand shri ramakrishna the understanding of swami vivekananda about shri ramakrishna was by far the best he could grasp the significance of shri ramakrishna's message in its totality and knew how to present shri ramakrishna because if you read the life of shri ramakrishna and the gospel of shri ramakrishna you will see that shri ramakrishna used to meet so many people who used to come to him the devotees and the youngsters he used to give individual attention to each one of them that's the most surprising feature of shri ramakrishna he used to remember them even just by seeing them just once If somebody has just seen him uh, once even after 3 years 4 years he says oh uh, why is that person not coming do tell him ask him to come so this was his extraordinary memory when well, if you take it as just memory but if you think about his capacity to see the inside of the individual and know the past present and future so he was more interested in tapping the or rousing the spiritual capacity of the individual and so in many instances in most of the cases he knew beforehand that such and such a person is going to come today or in a few days and he would be prepared to meet that person and when the person comes he would tell him yes i knew you were coming and he would give him instructions according to his spiritual uh, capacity his receptivity and all that in fact he says the mother showed me who are all coming and he was prepared to meet them he says i used to plan in my mind what i'm going to tell to this person what i'm going to tell that person so he was ready to impart his rich knowledge which he had gained from his spiritual experiences to people as it suits them the example that he used to give is a beautiful example he says the mother knows how to feed her children to the child the uh, the first child who has grown up she has some spicy thing something rich which she can digest and to the child which is young and cannot take hard stuff she has some porridge or something which is soft which is easily digestible so that the child does not suffer so he knew what to give to whom he was a master teacher so shri ramakrishna taught these people by his own life by his pure character by his spiritual genius that he was and 
he could just impart spirituality by a single touch or not even a touch by just seeing them hmm? even just by looking at them he could transfer spiritual power or rouse their spiritual uh, inherent spiritual capacity this was something remarkable in the uh, way shri ramakrishna taught them if you read the life uh, lives of the direct disciples how they got trained under shri ramakrishna he used to take care of every small detail he was a very uh, keen observer he could observe even the minutest details and even if they could not they would not tell him some things about their uh, difficulties in spiritual life he had the capacity to understand he could know isn't it so we find all these beautiful instances they are so inspiring uh, see rakhal or raja maharaj who became later on swami brahmananda when he started coming to shri ramakrishna he was a young lad and uh, he was trying to meditate according to the instructions of shri ramakrishna he was staying with shri ramakrishna he was a pure wonderful boy and shri ramakrishna had great love for him he used to call him as his spiritual son and uh, one day this rakhal raja was meditating in the temple kali temple courtyard and uh, he tried to meditate but somehow his mind was not concentrating on that day his meditation was not happening so after some time he started feeling disappointed oh i've been coming here to shri ram krishna such a great spiritual master for so many days i am moving in his company trying to learn from him and he has given me so many instructions i am trying to meditate but why is nothing happening must be i am not fit for this life must be i am not destined to be here under him and uh, have god realization or such high spiritual experiences so i think i should leave this place something like this there was so there were such thoughts in his mind and he was uh, having a lot of hesitation a lot of doubts and then he was afraid to tell this to shri ram krishna he did not want to hurt shri ram krishna's feelings and then he said he thought i'll just go and then bow down to him pay my respects to him for the last time and then not come back i'll not come back here i'll leave and as soon as he came to shri ram krishna's room and bowed down to him shri ram krishna looked at him and said why why do why is it that i see your face dark and uh, it appears that you are not in your normal state what's happening in your mind <laughs> see shri ram krishna could re- see through isn't it he did not have to express he could immediately see and then shri ram krishna uh, drakal told him you see this is the problem i'm not able to meditate i think i'm not fit to be here with you and then shri ram krishna out of his infinite compassion this is something which you will see again and again in shri ram krishna's life immediately he would probably write a mantra on the tongue or touch and give that spiritual touch through which the genius could be awakened in him and that is what he did he said he gave him something and then he said go and meditate now and immediately rakhal was lost in deep meditation so this shri ramakrishna whom we all adore he is an enigma we don't know who he is isn't it if you read the life of shri ramakrishna people understood him in different ways everybody was trying to understand him he was looked upon by people by some people as a saint by some people as an incarnation by some people as a good holy man a priest as a brahman belonging to the priest class a pujari a person who worships in the temple some people thought he was mad some people thought he was foolish to be leading such a life which is completely different from the ordinary run of life not caring for money not caring for his family not caring for anything not having any possessions they thought must be there is something wrong with him why is he different 
You know, that is how we always see people who are different from our line of thinking or the general way of thinking. Think, oh, there must be something wrong with this person. Hmm? So that is how Sri Ramakrishna was looked upon by most of the people. Most of the people thought he was just of his mind. Hmm? Very few people could understand the spiritual genius of Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna himself would say that an incarnation is not understood. It's very difficult to understand an incarnation when he appears on this earth, when the divine comes down as an incarnation to help humanity to move towards divinity. Such an incarnation is looked upon usually as another human being. Sri Krishna also tells in the Bhagavad Gita, in the ninth chapter, he says, people who are foolish, who are given to worldly ways, they look upon me as an ordinary human being, given to all the usual human frailties, eating, sleeping, and going about the daily life. They don't understand my higher nature. Avajananti ma mudha manushim tanumashritam. Param bhavam ajananto. They don't know about, they don't think about my higher nature. Hmm? So this is what Sri Krishna says. Sri Ramakrishna also used to say this. He would say, uh, a party of uh, singers, musicians, and uh, those who do rural plays, jatra, it's called jatra in Bengali. They happen to come to a village to do some performances. They used to camp there for two or three days and do some dramas and musical plays and all that. People used to come in the evenings watch them do this, plays, enjoy. And then after two or three days of a lot of enjoyment and merriment and uh, all this plays and all that, the party would silently wrap up and then go to another village, an adjoining village to have performances there. So nobody would bother to ask them who they are, where they are coming from, how long they are going to stay, and what is their... Uh, ways of presenting, what are the other types of things that they know, where all they have been, all the other details, you see. People never bothered. They would just enjoy seeing the play and then clap and then wish them and finish and forget about it. So similarly, when an incarnation comes, people don't bother to understand him. People don't bother to get his uh, all the details about his life, about his spiritual realization. They're just happy to be in his company and then forget also, sometimes. So Nivedita also refers to this. It comes in one of our scriptures. Nivedita says, he gives, she gives this example regarding Swami Vivekananda. There was a beautiful small pond with water and beautiful colorful fishes in that pond. So in the night, these fishes would see the reflection of the moon in the waters and thought, oh, he's our friend, we'll play with him. And they used to jump around and then play with the reflection and enjoy the whole night. And as soon as the night uh, would pass and the sun would come up, the reflection would no longer be there. And then the fish would realize, oh, this reflection was never ours. It is not our friend. He comes from a very higher region. He was just there to give us some company for the night during the dark times. So Nivedita refers to this and that is how the incarnation comes to uplift humanity, comes to help humanity when there is doubt, when there is confusion, when religion is misunderstood or spiritual life is not so easy. Okay? when spiritual life gets clouded or spiritual life is misunderstood through doubts, through confusions, or by uh, the various secretions that happen over a period of time. Religion is pristine, spiritual life is beautiful, but over a period of time, because of our desires, our worldly ambitions, our wrong attitude, we misunderstand spirituality, we misunderstand religion, interpret it wrongly, try to make it 
a worldly enterprise rather than holding on to the true core of spirituality. We try to make things out of it, get things out of spiritual life, out of religion. We use religion for worldly benefits. That is, a pro- that, that is when the problem starts. Hmm? Religion becomes commercialized, isn't it? So now, Sri Ramakrishna was, as you see in the life of Sri uh, Jesus also, was so careful about mixing religion or spiritual life with worldly uh, desires, isn't it? You have the beautiful uh, instance in the life of Christ when he came to the temple. I think if it's right, it was a Jewish synagogue he came and then he found people selling things there in the uh, synagogue, in the temple. And he simply went about and then just threw all the things, put them all down and said, this is not a place where you can have a market. This is a place of God, where you give your mind to God, not to business. Hmm? Okay, so Sri Ramakrishna also was very careful in having the true spiritual focus in life. If you read his life, if you read the incidents that are connected to his life, he was a uh, person given to complete renunciation of any worldly desire or worldly outlook. Hmm? Uh, There are so many instances depicting this You know that famous instance when there was a person who came and then found uh, that the bed cover on his uh, bed, he had very few things in his room, just one cot on which he used to sleep and one small couch on which he used to sit and talk to people and uh, just two sets of clothes and maybe two slippers, nothing much. You see his room was not furnished, carpeted like you see in <laughs> many of our places today. So he was so simple, so straightforward. Uh, many times uh, he would just have a small cloth on him. And uh, this man, a very rich man, who came to see the saint, saw that the bed sheet which was covering his bed was torn in a small place. And he felt very sad. Oh, why is a saint like this, why should he suffer like this with a torn bed sheet? He does not have any means. He does not take any salary or anything. He does not keep any money for himself. So there must be some provision to provide for this saint. So he approached him with great reverence, with very great, uh, with sincere reverence, and then said, uh, Sir, I would like to provide something for your needs. Uh, Maybe I could give you some money and then it can be kept in a bank or something and from that money you could provide for your necessities. Uh, Maybe a new bed sheet, some clothes, you will need something after all. And I said, what? What did you say? He said, I'm going to, I want to give you, it was a huge sum. What he was saying was a huge sum in those days. I want to give uh, you some money so that it can be kept in your name. He said, what, you want to make me worldly? Get out of here. And he pushed him out of his room. He just pushed him, necked him out of his room. And then Sri Ramakrishna had a nice thought. He thought, oh, okay, let me just test Sharada Devi, his wife. Uh, He said, you see, I don't touch money. I can't use money. And I don't need money. But if my wife wants, you can ask her. You can go and talk to her. So this man came to the Mahabhat where Sharada Devi used to stay, just across his room. And then came and said, you see, I went to uh, your husband, Sri Ramakrishna, and he would not touch money. I wanted to offer something uh, so that his daily needs can be taken care of. Can I leave it with you? Can you use it for him? She said, oh, if he does not want, then I have no need for it. <laughs> she was also of the same caliber. She said, no, if Uh, He does not want, I have no need for it. And then this man realized what an extraordinary couple these people were. So Sri Sharada Devi also says that Sri Ramakrishna was perfect in renunciation. Uh, I have never seen or the world has never seen such renunciation, she says. The world has never seen such supreme renunciation in anybody till now. So this was the 
main thing in Sri Ramakrishna. No worldly or selfish motive behind any of his dealings with people or the devotees, disciples who came to him. So Sri Ramakrishna would himself say that I know that these devotees who come to me, uh, the young disciples who come to me, they can't even give me a small uh, sugar candy or a small piece of sweet. They can't drink. They are just students. But I see God in them. And I relate to them. I love them because I see God in them. Not because I see a human being there. This is the highest uh, instruction that we get from the Upanishads. Seeing God in everyone is the highest uh, spiritual realization that is possible for a human being. Having a personal relationship with God, having a vision of God is okay. That is also a spiritual realization. But there are stages in spiritual realization. Seeing myself as the self, as uh, the consciousness, that is a spiritual realization. Identifying this or realizing the identity of the self with the Supreme, that is another spiritual realization. Yes, these are all levels of spiritual realization. But the Upanishads say that not seeing any difference anywhere between the humans or animals or having the same vision of seeing the same consciousness everywhere, the same consciousness as manifest in myriad forms, that is the highest realization according to the Upanishads. Sri Ramakrishna had this realization when he uh, had the experience in the temple, you see, after doing his intense sadhana, when he wanted to realize God, when he was trying to realize the Supreme, and he had that experience which he himself describes about his experience in the temple of Mother Kali. When he had the uh, experience of Mother Kali, he says everything merged into one portion of consciousness. The temple, the balls, the utensils which he was using for worship, the image of Kali, everything was merged in one ocean of consciousness. There was no difference anywhere. So this is the highest realization according to the Upanishads. And Sri Ramakrishna had all types of experiences, spiritual experiences. If you see, he uh, had experiences of all types as a devotee, as a jnani, all the paths that are followed in the Hindu tradition and also in the, uh, according to the Christian and the Islamic tradition. So Sri Ramakrishna tasted the divine in various ways. And he was never satisfied. He used to always experiment. And he was so humble. He was so uh, sincere that he would always want to know how others experience truth or God. Because yes, truth is infinite. The Supreme is infinite. There are infinite ways of knowing the truth. So he never had any biased opinion. Oh, what I have realized is the Supreme. This is the only way in which one can approach God. No. Never did Sri Ramakrishna say like this. He never liked this. He would say, I uh, like to play different tunes in my flute, not stick to only one note. I will play different tunes, different ragas, different melodies in my tune, uh, in my flute, in my instrument. So this was Sri Ramakrishna's approach. Never bigoted. He was never fanatical, never said that this is the only way. Oh, you all have to accept me, you all have to follow me and just go by my instructions, never. Sri Ramakrishna was so liberal, so free, he would in fact ask anybody whom he met, you see, I have experienced like this, what is your experience? How do you look upon God? How do you approach God? Do you like God with form? Do you like God without form? All these ways, you know, he used to ask people, and when they said something, he would say, yes, that's true, but I have also, I have experienced it in this way. He would add to their experience or he would add to their knowledge. He would say, oh, I have experienced it in this way. So don't hold on to your view and say that only this is true. Accept that all these things are true. God can be with form, without form, much more. We cannot say, we cannot limit the infinite through our conception. 
So this was something remarkable because it's uh, it is beyond even imagination how a person could be so liberal in his attitude, coming from a rural background, coming from an uneducated background. Sri Ramesh never went to the school. He uh, refused to go to the school and get bound by the usual educational pattern hmm, to thinking. And But his ideas, he was so liberal in his attitude, accepting everything, so receptive to ideas. He would say, as long as I live, so long do I learn. There's no end to learning. There's no end to knowing. There's no uh, end to understanding God. This was his way of looking at the Supreme. So now, Sri Ramakrishna, <clears throat> the question comes, why should we try to understand Sri Ramakrishna? Or why should we try to understand anything for that matter? How does it help us? Hmm? When we adore, when we admire, when we love someone, we always try to understand the person, isn't it? Even in our personal relationships, you want to love your son better, you want to love your daughter better, you want to love your husband better or your wife better, you need to understand the person. You try to give time, you uh, have patience, sit and talk, or try to observe, and then forgive and forget some things which are not present, and try to love the person and understand the person, isn't it? So without understanding the person, you can never truly love or have a relationship with the person. So the understanding leads to better love, better relationship. Sri Ramakrishna would say, <clears throat> one must have a relationship with the divine, he would say. He would say, have a relationship with God as a father, as a mother, as a child, as a friend, as a lover, whichever appeals to you, any of the ways. And this will help in thinking about God more deeply, you would say. When the relationship is intense, you're always thinking about the person. So much so that sometimes it becomes an obsession, isn't it? Somebody you love, the mother or the child or the lover, they're always thinking about them, always trying to do things for them, buying some gifts for them, doing something which will please them or tell something that will please them, isn't it? So Sri Ramakrishna used to say, this relationship intensifies the attachment. It brings in a constant remembrance. So he would say, if we have a link to God in this way, we can direct our usual worldly emotions, worldly passions to a higher direction. So redirect our base emotions, base thoughts, base passions to the divine, to the higher source. This is what Sri Ramakrishna uh, used to uh, advocate to the devotees. There's a beautiful instance. One lady who was quite aged, who was a widow, came to Sri Ramakrishna one day and uh, in the course of her conversation with Sri Ramakrishna told him, uh, you see, I'm trying to meditate. I try to meditate and I want to meditate. I love to meditate, but I'm not able to. Sri Ramakrishna said, why? What's the problem? What are you, what's the problem that you're facing in meditating on God? She said, whenever I try to meditate, when I close my eyes and try to meditate on Gopala, the child Krishna, the image of my nephew, a small child who I love very much, comes to me. So his image comes rather than the image of the divine. And I end up not meditating. She says, oh, that's good. That's not a problem at all. Just look upon your nephew as Kopala. Why do you worry? He, he never told her, oh, you are a lady who is so old and a widow and 
not able to meditate, this is very bad for you, you are doing a sin. No, he never said that. He said, wonderful, you love your nephew, that's good. So think of him as God. Think of him as the divine child, Krishna. When you feed him, think you are feeding Krishna. When you bathe him, think you are bathing Krishna. When you dress him, think you are bathing, uh, you are dressing Krishna. Do everything that you are doing, but only change the attitude. Think that he is no longer your nephew, but this divine child Krishna. And she started doing that and very soon advanced so much spiritually that she started seeing the divine child Krishna in her nephew. She could raise her mind beyond that attachment to that boy, to that child, and take it to the divine level. Hmm? There is another beautiful uh, instance where Sri Ramakrishna tells us how to direct, redirect our thoughts and affection to the divine. Sri Sharada Devi, his uh, wife, you all know that he worshipped her, isn't it? As Shodashi, when uh, she came to Dakshineshwar after some time, he worshipped her and in the course of worship, hmm, uh, he offered to her some things, uh, a sari and uh, things which are offered to the mother during the puja. So after a few days, maybe just one or two days, Holy Mother had a doubt in her mind. What do I do with all these things that he has offered to me? This new sari, I mean, these are all costly things. Bangles, sari, this and that. So many things he had offered to her. She had a doubt. What do I do with all this? Do I use them or can I give it to somebody else? This was the doubt in her mind. And then she asked uh, Sri Ramakrishna, what do I do with this? Sri Ramakrishna said, you can give it to your mother, your uh, mother Shama Sundari Devi, who is in uh, Jairambati. And then immediately he added a uh, rejoinder. He said, give it to your mother, but don't look upon her as only your mother. Look upon her as the universal mother. See the supreme divine in her and give it to her. See, he was directing the love and affection that Sharda Devi had for her mother to the divine. Of course, Sharda Devi was an extraordinary uh, spiritual person. But this is to demonstrate to us that Sri Ramshana is telling her to do this. So we find so many instances, if you read the life of Sri Ramakrishna, if you try to understand the life of Sri Ramakrishna, as he was saying, whenever you read something, there are two aspects. One is the information part. The dates, the instances, the people who were there in the company of Sri Ramakrishna. If you read the Gospel, Master Mahasaya gives all those details. Oh, the river was flowing calmly, there was a beautiful atmosphere, the moon was there and this and that. He gives all the information, who was there, what Sri Ramakrishna was telling. The intention is not the information. Intention is the idea that is there behind the information. How we can connect to Sri Ramakrishna, how we can feel the presence of Sri Ramakrishna, how we can be in the presence of Sri Ramakrishna, be in the company of Sri Ramakrishna, isn't it? So, Sri Ramakrishna wants to be in his company. He used to call the devotees, you see. He used to go to the top of the building and then say, Oh, where are you? Please come. The mother had revealed to him, the Divine Mother had revealed to him that devotees will come. He was eager to share his knowledge with the devotees. He had done intense spiritual practices and unearthed some of the rarest gems of spirituality which he wanted to share to others. So this is one uh, interesting uh, idea that we find in Indian religions or Hindu uh, scriptures. All other things diminish when you share it with others. If you have some food, you give it to somebody and then it reduces in quantity. 
you have some wealth you give it to somebody and it reduces you are uh, poorer by that amount isn't it there's only one thing which increases when you share it to others and that's knowledge your knowledge improves when you share it to others it never diminishes because that's very logical so when you try to explain things to others when you try to express things to others you organize your thoughts better you start thinking how do i present this how do i tell this how do i make the other person convinced about this how do i uh, increase his knowledge or her knowledge isn't it so in this process you learn more you organize your thoughts more and the knowledge gets converted into wisdom the knowledge that is there within you you churn that knowledge and make butter out of it as shri ramshne used to say if you want butter out of milk you will have to set it with some yogurt or curds as we call it there put the bacteria in it keep it in a place allow it to settle allow it to form for some time maybe one day you have to keep it in the right place you cannot disturb it by opening it up and seeing again and again what's happening you have to leave it aside leave it undisturbed and the next day if you see it would have set as beautiful yogurt you can churn it make butter out of it and use it shri ramshna gives a beautiful <coughs> uh, puts it in a beautiful way if you mix water if you dilute milk with water you cannot separate the water from the milk unless you have a modern gadget through which you can separate the milk isn't it so it gets mixed similarly if your spiritual life or your devotion to god is not well cultivated it gets mixed with worldly ambitions and desires it becomes worldly sooner or later shri ramshna says but if you want to remove the milk separate the milk the essence of the milk from the water then you have to set curds and once it becomes curds you churn it and get the butter out of it get the essence of milk is the butter so then you can keep the butter in water and it does not mix with the water it remains separate from the water so shri ramshna used to say when your devotion when your spiritual life is cultivated properly is nurtured properly then it does not become contaminated by the world wherever you are you can hold on to your clarity of mind as the yoga sutra says yoga ha chitta vritti nirodha having equanimity of mind or having control over the mind is yoga so shri ramshna says wherever you are you can be in peace whether you are in the world or out of the world in a market place you will be able to meditate even there so this is what shri ramakrishna says and he used to say if the mirror has dust over it has layer of dust over it you can't see the image you can't see the reflection you need to clean the mirror so similarly if our mind is cluttered by worldly issues worldly ambitions desires or we have things which appear to be more important than the divine or spiritual life then you can't have devotion you cannot conceive of god you cannot understand shri ramakrishna in the right perspective isn't it so the cleaning of the mirror has to happen cleaning of the mind has to happen through our sadhana through seva through repetition of the mantra whatever process that you adopt if there is sincerity if there is prayer if there is longing the mind becomes pure the mind starts getting cleaner and your understanding of shri ramakrishna becomes more and more clear so what you are saying the tattva or the information part of it is there when you read some book when you read some uh, scriptures you get the general information but there is what is called as reading in between the lines trying to go behind the scene trying to understand grasp the meaning isn't it that is more important that is where uh, 
your mind starts understanding things. So Sri Ramakrishna appears as a saint or a holy, holy man who is intensely practicing spiritual life. But as your understanding of Sri Ramakrishna improves, as you start understanding him more and more, as you read more and more, listen to him more and more, then your conception of Sri Ramakrishna becomes clearer and clearer. You start realizing he is much more than what you thought. Mm -hmm. So many devotees have experienced this. They start reading the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna and in the initial days they feel, oh, Sri Ramakrishna is uh, repeating many things again and again. So he is practically repeating the instructions to different devotees on different occasions, but it's the same thing. And then they come and say, oh, it's not so interesting. But after a few days, as they go on reading, they start seeing different things. They understand the same instructions in a different way. They start seeing light in his instructions and then they get more and more interested. So that is how it is. Our understanding improves as our mind becomes clearer, more receptive. So Sri Ramakrishna is a wonderful life which you need to explore and understand. There is so much information available about Sri Ramakrishna, especially you are in a center where Swami Chaitanya has done so much research. I mean, uh, the amount of information that you can get from his books is marvelous. So it's a meditative process. Read them and enjoy. Make your life beautiful, enjoyable by reading this books about Sri Ramakrishna. Uh, what's the time now? Am I... Forty-five. So, okay. Now, uh, if you see the lives of the direct disciples of Sri Ramakrishna or the devotees who came to Sri Ramakrishna, each one of them understood Sri Ramakrishna in their own way. It was not the same uh, approach that they had to Sri Ramakrishna. Narayan understood Sri Ramakrishna in one way. Rakhal or Swami Brahmananda approached Sri Ramakrishna in another way. Swami Premananda, yes, in a different way. All of them had different approaches to Sri Ramakrishna. Natu, who became Swami Adbhutananda, who was that uh, innocent shepherd, village boy, he had a different approach to Sri Ramakrishna. Shashi, who later on became Ramakrishnananda, his approach to Sri Ramakrishna was different. Sri Ramakrishna could relate to each one of them in their own way. And they related to Sri Ramakrishna in their own way. He did not have any uh, strict rules. Oh, no, you must approach me only in this way. Isn't it? So the devotees also, you find the lady devotees, you find the other men devotees who came to Sri Ramakrishna, approached Sri Ramakrishna in different ways. And all of them found fulfillment in Sri Ramakrishna. All of them found some spiritual uh, succor from Sri Ramakrishna. They were satisfied by coming to Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna could appease all these peoples who approached him in different ways. This is something remarkable, you see. Uh, in our life, when we uh, try to understand, when we look, by, look back upon our relationships with our father, mother, sister, brother, and our friends and all that, we always try to put ourselves in one framework. We don't want to relax or uh, let go of things which we hold dear to ourselves, isn't it? We want others to compromise, others to understand us, others to adjust to us, rather than we trying to get along with people, isn't it? We'll say, oh, I love you if you love me, or I love you if you do this for me. Always our love, our relationship is guided by what I want, not as what you or she wants, isn't it? But Sri Ramakrishna was different. He never demanded anything from others. He was always only giving. He was always trying to see the other point of view. He never had, uh, he never forced his opinions on others. He was so liberal. 
But this is something remarkable about Sri Ramakrishna that you see in his life. So if you have any questions or anything to ask about this, I think huh? maybe just a few minutes before we I speak about the movement in Brazil. <clears throat> you already heard all these things, you know, I didn't want to repeat them. No questions? Then I continue. Some more? Okay. Uh, then uh, Swami Vivekananda, after his success in the West, when he returned to India, and uh, that was the second time in the Mutt, the Belur Mutt had already been started. One day Girish Chandra Ghosh who was such a great devotee of Sri Ramakrishna, a great literary person. He came to Belurmat to meet Swami Vivekananda. They were sitting and chatting. There were some other devotees also there. And Girish uh, told Swami Vivekananda, Oh, you understood Sri Ramakrishna in such a wonderful way. You were the best uh, person who could grasp the meaning of Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna loved you so much. You love Sri Ramakrishna so much. And so why don't you write a life of Sri Ramakrishna? Why don't you put, hmm, give some time and put all your ideas and write the life of Sri Ramakrishna? That would be wonderful because you could grasp the essence of Sri Ramakrishna's life. So he said, this is something impossible that you are asking me to do. I cannot write the life of Sri Ramakrishna. I am always afraid I will be trying to limit this infinite personality of Sri Ramakrishna. So in Bengali, uh, we have a beautiful usage about Sri Ramakrishna. We say, Ananto Bhabu Moy, one who has infinite facets to his personality. There are so many facets to his personality that it's very difficult to decide, oh, Sri Ramakrishna is this and not this. You cannot define Sri Ramakrishna. You cannot limit Sri Ramakrishna. Because he is so encompassing, so wonderful in his uh, attitude. There is a beautiful uh, song or a hymn which Swami Vivekananda composed about Sri Ramakrishna. He has spoken uh, about Sri Ramakrishna only in two lectures, but he has composed that beautiful hymn which we sing during the Arati Khandana Bhava Bandhana. It is about Sri Ramakrishna, though he does not mention the name Sri Ramakrishna there. He describes all the uh, wonderful traits, values that you see in Sri Ramakrishna. And uh, the other hymn that we sing, O Marim Ritam, is also by Swami Vivekananda. Apart from these two popular ones which we all know, he composed one more hymn on Sri Ramakrishna, Achandala Pratihatarayu. There, he says, uh, this incarnation of Sri Ramakrishna, this divine manifestation of Sri Ramakrishna, he compares it to a huge wave that comes in the ocean. If you go to the ocean, if you see the sea, you will see there are many waves coming in the ocean. But sometimes there is a big huge wave which comes and then subsumes all the other smaller waves. It just pulls everything towards itself. And if you're standing on the beach, it just takes the sand down from your feet and then maybe you can get dragged into the water. It's a dangerous thing. Many people who swim in the ocean, you know, it requires skill. Otherwise they get dragged by the undercurrent into the ocean and are not able to come back. So this huge wave is something which brings so much with it. So Sri Ramakrishna used to, uh, Swami Vivekananda compares Sri Ramakrishna to that huge wave which comes in the ocean of Satchidananda, the infinite. Once in a way, this comes, this huge wave, and then brings a tumultuous change in the thinking of humanity. Humanity rise, rises itself by several steps. The general level of understanding, the general, general level of thinking, spiritual life, and all these ideas 
becomes so clear that God becomes nearer to us. We are able to approach God in an easier way. God becomes close to us. So Sri Ramakrishna did this. He brought God closer to our hearts. He said, yes, God is. God can be seen. God is not somebody who is sitting on the cloud somewhere far away. He is the core of your existence. He is within you. He is without you. You can approach God in whatever way you want. You see, all these things. Who would have believed that God is without the demonstration of Sri Ramakrishna? He has just demonstrated God to us, isn't it? There is a beautiful incident. After this, I will stop. Then go to the other topic. So, uh, our uh, senior monk, Swami Gautama Nandaji, who is one of our vice presidents, a very senior monk, he is 93 years, 94 years old now. Well, wonderful Swami. So when he was uh, a brahmachari, he is a disciple of Swami Yatishwaranji, who was a disciple of Swami Brahmanandaji, a very highly spiritual Swami. So Gautama Nandaji, when he was a brahmachari, uh, he was in... Uh, Kolkata, okay, Bhilurmat. And there was another very senior Swami, a vice president, Swami Onkaranandji, who was also a disciple of Swami Brahmanandji, as the head of one of our centers in Kolkata. The center is Kankurgachi or Yogodhyan, which was the place where Ramachandra Datta used to stay. Ramachandra Datta was a very close devotee of Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna himself had been to this place, Yogodhyan, many times huh? to see Ramachandra Datta. They used to be singing. There used to be a lot of spiritual discussion there. So this senior Swami, Unkaramji, was a very great scholar, very great uh, say, uh, monk, was highly advanced in spiritual life. He was staying there, was highly respected. And... Uh, Gautamananji went to pay respects to him, meet him once. So when he went there, uh, Onkaranji was very happy to uh, meet him. He received him and then showed him around and then took him to the top of the building, to the roof, a terrace of the building by steps. And then uh, he showed him the surrounding Calcutta, okay, and then showed, pointed to a chimney which was belching smoke. Okay, there was a chimney, a factory close by, and there was uh, smoke coming out, pouring out of the chimney. He pointed it out to him and asked him, What do you understand by seeing this? So, this young brahmachari, he just looked at it once again and said, I don't see anything much. I am not able to read much from this. What is it that you want to convey? Please tell me. Please explain. I am not able to understand. So this senior Swami said, Oh, don't you understand? Why should we, spiritual seekers, monks, who want to give our life to God and spiritual realization, why should we be in this city, in a city which is having so many factories and then so much of pollution amidst people. We should have been somewhere in the caves, in the Himalayas or in some forest being lost in meditation. Why should we be in a busy city life like this? The Swami said, please explain further. And then he said, you see, Sri Ramakrishna brought God to our doorsteps. He did not want people to go to the forest. He brought religion out of the forest into the cities, to your doorstep. That is why we are all here. We don't have to struggle to find God now. God is here. God can be seen here, in the cities, wherever you are, only if you have the right attitude, only if you can change the thinking process in your mind. So this is what he said. That is what Sri Ramakrishna demonstrated. So this is... Trying to, I'm also trying to understand Sri Ramakrishna. Every day, every moment, I'm also understanding, trying to understand Sri Ramakrishna. And over the years, yes, I'm happy that I'm able to understand him a little more, a little more. So it's an unending journey, isn't it? So I pray that you also understand Sri Ramakrishna more and more, love him more and more, 
and he loves you more and more, isn't it? Sri Ramakrishna used to say, if you walk one step, God walks ten steps to you. So let's take that one step and we will approach God and he will approach us. Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Tatsun.